Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another special edition of JMC Live. I'm your host, Jeremy Caverly. We actually have on the phone right now Pastor Steve, Steve Snook of Metro Church, who was involved with this recent flash mob in Santa Monica, California, the Live Nativity. There's a YouTube video. You'll be able to watch it here at the end. Pastor, I'd like to thank you for stopping by and, and, and allowing us to find out this wonderful story of sharing the story of Jesus Christ. How are you doing this evening? Doing really good. Chilly evening in uh, Southern California and Los Angeles, but it's uh, grateful to be talking to you. Well, that's 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 good news, you know. It's it, it is the good news, the good news of Jesus Christ. Uh, so, uh, Pastor, if you don't mind me calling you Pastor, you prefer I call you Steve. Uh, he's fine. Okay, I'll call you Steve from here on out. Then, um, tell me the beginning of this idea. How did you find out about this, and why is this happening? Well, a friend of mine that uh, used to attend my church, uh, his father had a, had a friend of his that was just sharing his burden for what he, he heard about uh, what was happening in Santa Monica with mm -hmm. the nativity scenes. We've had, you know, I don't know how familiar you are with Santa Monica, but it's pretty uh, anti-Christ in a lot of ways. Uh, but over the years, the last 59 years, in fact, uh, there's been a nativity scene right on the bluffs overlooking the ocean. And this last year, our nativity scenes uh, were kind of shut down by the city council. And so it's a pretty difficult time. We've been trying to stand up and see if there's a way to, to, to do this differently. And so during this time, uh, and we've been a part of it personally as a, as a church for about 15 years, but this has been going on. This is the 60th year. So I get a call from a guy named Malik, and uh, he said, someone gave me your number, and he said, you might be interested in what we're thinking about, and he, he began to tell me about this concept of doing a flash mob in Santa Monica to just kind of make a statement at Christmas that, uh, that, that the real meaning of Christmas still stands, and that, that they want to be an encouragement uh, to those of us that are in Christ in Santa Monica that doing this is I bet it was. And, and as you said, you know, we spoke before this interview, and I could tell tell that you uh, kind of teared up on the phone when I started sharing a little bit about my story, and I could hear in your voice the concern and the compassion that you have for the people of Santa Monica, and. The fact that this wasn't just another flash mob. This wasn't another event to promote something else. This was about sharing a relationship with Jesus Christ with another person. And I think you really grasped a hold of this whole event. I mean, you only had three weeks to get this all together. That in itself is just unfathomably heard of. It just, just doesn't happen. Yeah. Well, that's, that's because we got to see what the body of Christ can do when it works together. Mm -hmm. Although we were at a distance, um, it started with one small meeting in Santa Monica where they drove up to Orange County and, and, and we, we met and then it, emails were traded and phone calls and then we began to just look at, at different people who could just uh, who could step up. But you see, with just one seed that was being planted and it began to grow, and then many people began to come alongside and, and use their skills. And I tell you, we had some people that were so gifted that were involved. Uh, it was amazing to me and, and so encouraging to see how something could happen over three weeks. And then the, the word would begin to spread uh, throughout Orange County and, and into Los Angeles. And it was, and to see all these people come together is really amazing. So in, in about a week or two time, you gathered enough people to create a nativity skit and to create uh, a group of people that were going to sing carols, and you picked a location. Uh, so, so tell me about uh, the day of the event. What happened? Well, it was uh, pretty exciting just to, to see as some of the people came together who were going to be performing kind of this live nativity. Uh, some of the special singers that were going to start it off, knowing that it was just the mob was going to show up, uh, prepared to sing uh, three different carols um, and just kind of follow the lead of 
with the other people. So um, we went into a place called Santa Monica Place. Um, it's a, a big kind of open mall right by the sea. Mm -hmm. And so walked in, all of the, the people that were going to be the nativity were covered with overcoats, and so you couldn't see any of the costumes. But what happened is one lady just stepped out in, into the, the middle of this mall, the big open area, and the giant tree and boxes uh, look like giant uh, gift gifts. Uh, and then she just stepped out. This, she's a soprano, sings opera uh, professionally, and she just began to sing. And the, the crowd on each level, people began to look. And, uh, and then uh, a woman walked out of the crowd dressed as Mary with a baby in her hands and, and someone dressed like Joseph behind her. And a group of people, uh, singers, stepped behind the other lady who was singing and then the different members of the, of, of the crowd just began to walk out and dressed up as uh, shepherds. And, and then they began to come and, and look at the child and there was, uh, it was just... A, building, little by little, a nativity. Um, then some children stepped up with, uh, they, they walked out carrying some gifts for, for the wise men, and then wise men came, and, and it was just amazing to watch this all come into place. It's, it's the songs, now the crowd has now joined in, the mob has joined in now, uh, singing, Oh Come, Are You Faithful? And then it went into Silent Night, and Joy to the Lord, or a, uh, the world. There you go. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just very exciting just to, to hear as as just a few people turned into many people. We don't know how many people were there that were singing. We just know that other people began to walk up and, and we were handing out lyric sheets so they could join in for people that didn't know the songs. And, and even there was a choir, a group of a men's choir that had, had been uh, singing earlier and they just joined in and they were over on the side. It, People thought that it was a part of this whole production. So we just watched God put all the pieces together. It was very exciting. So and so for, for those that are interested, the, the this mall is three levels. So you're you're not looking at just a one tier mall. You're looking at a three tier mall. And in some of the photos, you can see people gathering at the edge of the other two levels. So they're on the bottom ground. As the crowd starts to build, as the nativity scene starts going, and and I, and I was told by uh, Sean there was a a choir, an actual choir already there doing something else that actually joined with you. So it was just another amazing God moment of how when you are willing to be a servant and be a vessel for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, anything is possible. So so Steve, what has happened since the uh, flash mob has occurred. I know that uh, the, the, locate, the other locations are having caroling and a live nativity to replace the one uh, that, that was removed, but what else is going on right now? I've been told a lot of good things are coming out of Santa Monica the last few weeks. You know, what happens when, when one door is shut, it's pretty exciting to watch the other doors be opened up again. Mm -hmm. When they said no to the nativity scenes, uh, it had been there for 59 years. The door opened up for a local business, uh, Christian family, and they're not, there are very few Christians in Santa Monica. They, they tell us uh, maybe 2% of Christians in Santa Monica. Mm -hmm. One of the, uh, it was, a study was done this last year that showed that we're the most resistant city in, in America. So it's very interesting that this would happen this way, that, that God would just continue to let us tell the story of Christmas, not just with some nativity scenes that have been there for years, but, but now these live nativities have been happening every night of the week on those same bluffs where it used to sit uh, for 59 years. Different churches coming together, united around this, uh, groups like Models for Christ, uh, uh, YWAM that, that have stepped up, and then to have a group come in from a, a completely different county into Los Angeles to come and do, to stand alongside us, it shows us that the, the body of Christ truly is being united. At our church, in fact, that next night, we were out singing carols and getting to meet some of the, uh, some of the locals that were going to the Santa Monica Pier, getting to meet tourists when we were in town, and uh, even to, to have some of the homeless guys just sit there and have hot 
chocolate with us and just sing the carols. But I think it's it's Santa Monica, Los Angeles, not forgetting that the real meaning of Christmas is Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. and that that He is He is everything behind this, and that we've forgotten that. So I'm very encouraged, and I'm encouraged by and people like you that are that are pro- proclaiming the gospel over you know across the nation across the world. We stand together. We really do get to proclaim the truth of Jesus Christ. So, so Steve, what message would you have for other pastors, ministries across America and even the globe that may have may feel the punch and the sting of either government or each other? Because I know sometimes we as Christians can be the worst thing ever to one another. Um, what message would you have for them today as they keep dealing with the adversity of being told to remain silent? times we say we just keep saying come to us you know come to our churches come listen to our message and as we look at the life of Jesus Christ we realize that he was always on the go he was going to where the people were and he, he lived the message and he touched the people and he loved them and I think that this is a call for us at, at Christmas a time when people's hearts are being softened uh, that have been hurt by, by maybe by Christians at the time maybe they've had bad experiences that we get to remind them of who Jesus really is. And we get to go to where they are. And I think that we have a great opportunity to do this. My hope is that maybe not this Christmas, maybe next Christmas, there could be flash mobs uh, singing Christmas carols in malls and in public places all over this nation, uh, just proclaiming the love of Jesus and us being available just to, to talk to people. I know that for me personally, the pastor, the other night after we were singing the carols, I got to talk with with a, an old guy that he would never dream he's homeless. But he said, I'm 68 years old, and I'm living on Social Security, and I can no longer live. Uh, and so I'm just living on the streets and trying to just get by. And I got to sit down and have coffee with him, realize that we've got to slow down, we got to take time, we got to be like Jesus and really care for people right where they are, and not just so we can you know, fill our churches, but so we can proclaim uh, the name of Jesus and touch the lives of the people who need to experience Christ at Christmas and every day of the year. And you're exactly right. As I, as I spoke with Sean earlier, I, 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 I kind of left a little message in her ear. Imagine if a school bus size vehicle drives up at 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning on Black Friday, sticks their head out the window, sings Merry Christmas, sings Silent Night, and they drive on down the road to the next location. What happens if um, another two, three, one-tier malls, groups of children, adults, uh, different groups, agencies, all walks of life, all different diversities, coming to together to sing, Oh, come all ye faithful. Yeah. And then going even further, going out to all the different areas, all over across the different locations, in the areas of wherever you may live, and reaching out to the homeless, or reaching out to the poor, and reaching out to different people. And the phrase that you've probably heard, that I've heard, well, there's a church on every corner, or there's a church, you know, that does this. You hear those phrases, but then that's the end of the conversation. And I said, communication doesn't need to stop there. We need to actually get out of our doors. And I, re- I realize there are a lot of ministries that do get out the door, but while there are others that cannot, many ministers now, uh, their full-time payment is an actual non-religious paid job and ministry is part-time and we need to find ways to take the part-time full-time ministry agencies people individuals lay persons clergy whatnot and find a way to work together i know there's a lot of theology that gets in the way and a lot of time issues that gets in the way but with social media and so many other things that exist now We almost don't have an excuse anymore why we can't communicate with one another. And this flash mob, three weeks amount of time to actually reach the least of these, to help send a message out in a secular mall of singing Christmas songs to Jesus Christ as worship so other people could join in. I watched the video. There are people crying. There's hushed crowds. There's others that are singing along. And at the end, with the LCD, the little lights that you see uh, flashing along, everyone, you see everyone start to diverse. But the most interesting happens at the end of this whole flash mob. People start talking to one another. Do you want to share any stories that you've heard about people talking to one another after the flash mob? Mm-hmm. You know, 
I think realizing that that the people were standing around me, that we were we were all enjoying this moment. And some of those people, I realized, didn't speak the same language that I spoke. We have a lot of European uh, tourists that, that come to Santa Monica, and I realized they, that they wanted those lyric sheets. They wanted to try to sing along and, and getting to just say Merry Christmas to them and just the smiles and realizing that communicating the love of Christ, sometimes we can't even speak the same language, but I realized that, that even the... the, the the lyrics that I was singing and that maybe these other people couldn't understand, but I realized they know that same song. Mm -hmm. At Christmas Carol, they sing in another language. And so I just realized that this is a time that, that we get to make the gospel very personal by taking the time to look into people's eyes and to spend the time of finding out more about them, not just trying to tell them uh, everything that we think they need to hear. And, and every one of us get a chance to do that. And I, I pray that that, that your listeners, that other people that come alongside you, that we each of us will just catch, uh, you know, that vision for what God wants I, us to do. Mm -hmm. It doesn't always have to be the huge event. It can just be it's the one person, and we we gotta we can never forget that. You're exactly right. It's, it takes one person to start something, and you go from one person to another person. Like I said in another interview earlier today, it's yeah. like having a bunch of dots on a page. You got to get your dot on the page, and then you start connecting the lines, and eventually you have a complete, amazing, orchestrated uh, facade on the wall, and it can look as beautiful as a rose to a wonderful garden of roses. But it starts with that one person. See, I think many, t I think many times, uh, I've helped with people with fundraisers, I've helped with people with mission trips, and speaking engagements, music engagements, whatnot. And it, I've always heard this dialogue, well, I don't have the money, or I don't have the time, I don't have this. And the more that if you look down into the core being of an individual, we all are different pieces of the body of Christ. We all have something to offer. Mm -hmm. We all have an ability to do something, and that's our voice. Okay. You know, the, the most shyest person I met has friends normally, and they talk about whatever it is they're doing. Share the message. Share the video today of the flash mob. Let others in your area know. Just because you don't have one right now doesn't mean they can't be blessed by it. Share the video of the flash mob. Talk about the songs in your homes, with your friends, at your job, at your school. In these next couple of weeks, start singing the songs. And I think that's one of the things that... that that a lot of us have forgotten what to do is to talk to one another, to share the message mm -hmm. of the hope and peace in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Steve, do you have a final message up for us today? Yes, one of the one of the great things that came out of this was that churches that are very very busy with our Christmas programs, we we came together and did this. Mm -hmm. It wasn't about one church, one denomination. Is the body of Christ that came together to proclaim in unity that Jesus is very much alive and the God who sent his only son that we saw laid in a manger 33 years later, he went to the cross. And it's his, his death that brings us life. And he's the one that paid the price. And now we get to live in grace and his mercy and his peace. And we get to share that message that, that is full of everything that Christmas means and everything that Easter means, and, and may we just continue to live it out, and, and just love so deeply, and, and like Jesus loves the people. You're exactly thank right. You, well, thank you very much, Steve, for this wonderful opportunity. It's been a great evening.